Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody on this Monday? Hey, um, where are you guys from? Why don't you pop down into the comments and let me know where you're from. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Hope you're doing awesome out there in Colorado. So today's weather is kind of dismal, drizzly, nothing too much to write home about. So hopefully you guys have it better than I do. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Um, so anyway, I am super excited about this topic because I think that we can all use a little, um, refresher. We need to step outside of our comfort zone. I try and tell myself that all of the time. So, um, I see people are still hopping on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited that you're here. So again, for those that might not know me, because there are people that don't, my name is Lisa Kaye, and I have been long arming since 2004. So machine quilting since 2004. So I've been at it for quite a while. I've done a lot. I've taught everywhere, went international. So um, you will be able to check all that out if you visit my website. I'm getting my new bio page up. I hate talking about myself. I hate promoting myself, but I'm going to tell you, my business coach is like, you have to introduce yourself. I don't like to do that. Anyway, oh my gosh, I see a lot of you. Um, uh, <laughs> Sue, Sue's like, how many Facebook pages do you have? Well, Sue, I have, um, this one is my free one. This is my business page. Then I have my personal page. And then um, I have obviously the Facebook group for Tribe and the Facebook group for the Academy. So I'm so glad you found me this time. <laughs> I'll have to get uh, more specific as to where I am, um, am at so you can find me a little bit better. So give me a thumbs up if um, you use all three of the tools on your machine, meaning we're specifically talking long arms here your stitch regulator, your cruise control, which is where the needle keeps going um, at the speed that you designate it, or manual. So give me a thumbs up and a heck yeah, I use all three because I don't know a lot of people that use all three. So we're going to kind of jump right in and um, see what we can do. I've got my little controls down here. Ooh, we've got some people that use all three and I love that. Love, 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 love. Hi, Carol, how are you? Hope you're doing well over there. I know it's evening for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so again, looking at our machines, the majority of machines nowadays have the stitch regulated machine, right? The mode. We have the cruise mode. Like I just said, the cruise mode is the mode that you set how fast that needle's going to go. So as you move along, right, and you stop, the needle is still going to keep going. Whereas in the stitch regulated mode, as soon as you stop, the needle stops. So that's what I mean when I refer to the cruise mode. Okay, manual mode which is the one that I find most people are like, no, heck no, and they want to run away from, is the where you set it to how fast you want the needle to move. And it goes that all the time. It just goes, 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 goes. So those are the three, um, the three modes. So Sue, what are you saying over here? You don't like your needle to move without my intervention. <laughs> it goes totally rogue. Okay, yeah, I can, I can definitely definitely relate to that. So those are the three modes. So do me a favor, pop down into the comments and give me which one you use. And it could be one, two, and three. It could be two. It could be one, whichever. But pop into the comments and let me know which of those three modes you like to use. All right. So I found that the stitch regulated mode is the one that people use the most, okay? And I, I'd have to admit when I first started quilting, this was my, um, this was the mode that I felt safest in, right? Because when I stopped the machine, it stopped. So I like to use stitch regulated mode. It's pretty rare. Every once in a while, I'll use it when I do ruler work. 
um, just because when I reposition my ruler, I don't want my needle moving. But really, in fact, for those that know me, when I'm when I am doing ruler work and I need to move my ruler, I stop my machine completely um, because I don't want to bump it um, and have to to pull out you know the seam ripper there's nothing good that comes with a date with Jack the Ripper so I avoid it at all costs so but I do find that most people when they first start start and they only stitch in the stitch regulated mode um, Carolyn what are you saying here I'm just gonna add this and hopefully it'll come up no it doesn't come up okay so all depending upon what I'm quoting you know what I'm gonna go back through the comments after so keep them coming I love to see them, but um, yeah, just keep them coming and then we'll go back through. If you have a specific question, just quickly put a Q in front of it um, so that I know that it's a question and I don't buzz on past it. Okay, so that's the stitch regulated mode. So that's the mode that most people use um, when they're first started. The cruise, this is what I am in almost all the time. It is great for doing ruler work, but like I said, what's going to happen is when I reposition my ruler, I will stop my machine completely. Okay. So even though I, you know, I could have a couple, you know, needle up, needle down to, to get my ruler moved. I like to stop it completely because I don't want to have to pull out the um, seam ripper. So now the cruise, you can set that needle, right, to go as quickly or as slowly as you want. So typically when I'm in ruler work and I'm doing this, I have that cruise set on 250 RPMs. So again, I think some machines are different, but that's what I set it at. When I'm doing motifs, like if I'm doing my feathers, then I've got that all the way ramped up to probably about 750 um, 800 depending upon the size of the feathers that I'm doing so but I love this mode I think this this is kind of this is where I live most of the time um, so hopefully you guys have cruise mode because it's really really good um, okay so manual mode now this is the mode that people are most afraid of and what I'm going to try to encourage you to do is not be afraid of manual mode it has its, its purposes, it's a great tool. So I use manual mode when I am doing fill work and not all fill work, specifically my pebbles, my stippling, any, nobody's gonna be counting my stitch length so I'm not concerned. And I find that it's much, I get a much nicer, hmm, I, I don't, much nicer feel to my machine. Um, when I'm in manual mode trying to do those things. The stitch regulator isn't trying to catch up to me um, or anything like that. So that's kind of where, um, where I use the manual mode. So pop into the comments, let me know. Heck yeah, I love using manual mode for my fills. Now, with that being said, um, just like you, I tell you guys to try and get out of your comfort zone, I try to get out of mine as well. So every once in a while, I will turn to the manual mode and I will do my motifs. And I just, the only thing I'm concentrating on is actually moving at a steady pace. I'm not worried about necessarily how they look because typically it's just a practice piece. But I just try to move at a nice steady pace to see how consistent I can get those stitches. So I'm not saying you have to do that, but... It is quite fun to just turn it on and play. It's, um, it's a very soothing sound. So I think I've said in the past that when I'm at my sewing machine, it's, very, it's a very soothing sound. And if I'm having a bad day, I know I've got to get down and do some piecing of some sort because it kind of puts me in a little bit more of a zen mode. And that's exactly what the manual mode um, on my long arm does. Um, for me. It's just a nice steady sound. There's no ring, ring from the stitch regulator, which you just don't ever want to hear. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys use manual mode as well. 
Um, so again, that stitch regulator, one of the things with the stitch regulated mode that I'm not overly fond of is typically there's a little bit of a hesitation as you act as you try to move and I've taught on all brands of machines and so it's not any one that does it it's I've found almost all of them do it um, so that when I'm doing ruler work that's kind of why I like the needle to kind of keep going and I use cruise because if I'm not and I'm at a dead stop and I try and like get going there's a hesitation and sometimes you have that one bigger stitch um, and so that's one of the reasons why I don't use the stitch regulated mode. Now, I am by no means saying that that stitch regulated mode doesn't have its its niche and its home and its and its and its purpose or you know um, because I think all of them do. You need to try all of them and figure out what you're most comfortable with, right? So, I mean, back when I started, stitch regulators were new, so we didn't have the cruise mode. It was stitch regulated or manual, so those were only two options. So play around with it and see what actually works best for you in each of the different applications that you do. So when I was doing pantographs, I typically stayed in stitch regulated mode um, because I was behind the machine and um, I was starting and stopping off of the quilt. So stitch regulated with what I used to use when I did pantographs. So um, the cruise mode, again, remember that needle is going to keep moving um, even when you stop, right? Depending upon what speed you had set it at. So just to kind of reiterate, when I'm doing my ruler work, I have it set around 250 RPMs. And when I'm doing my motifs, I'm more 750 Mm, yeah, probably around 750 for doing um, my motifs. Now, when you go into manual mode and you are, um, you know, going to do your fills or really whatever you're going to do, I can tell you what I set my machine at, but since it's more of a comfort feel, you have to kind of match your, the, the how fast you're moving your machine right to the speed that you're going so because you don't want really big stitches so play around with that I'm typically only using manual mode for the most part other than my playing with the motifs um, I am using it specifically for like my pebbles and my stippling so um, that's when I use manual mode but I really really do want to encourage you to get out of your comfort zone and try the different um, the different modes because it really does make a huge difference. So I want you to think of them as their tools. They're the tools of your machine. Um, and you know, just like we have tool, we have our rotary cutter, we have our fabric snips, we've got um, you know our different rulers that do different things. These three modes all do different things within your quilting um, to make it better. Um, for you. So make sure that you, you know, really kind of get out and try and um, play around and figure out which ones um, you like the best. So I'm going to hop into the comments here. The wrong one. I'm trying to keep these um, relatively short so um, that you guys can get down into your studios and actually create. So I'm just going to quickly scroll. If you guys have any questions or you use your machines differently, leave that in the comments. I would love to hear it and I'm sure everybody else would as well. So it looks like we've got quite a few people um, on here. I love seeing Brenda on here. She is from like the town next to me. So hi Brenda, how are you? Um, all right, just scrolling through. Um, okay, so it looks like most people like that stitch regulated mode. Yeah, number one. Oh, Gina likes the cruise control. Love my cruise control. Um, but like as I'm scrolling through, it really is mostly stitch regulated. I should do a poll on this. Um, but yeah, okay. 
so Carolyn says, I'm not sure why it's coming across in black. I'm going to have to fix that. So I'll just remove that and I will just chat it for you. Um, so Carolyn says it's all depending on what she's quilting. She's tried stitch regulated with the Nolteen and couldn't do it. Um, and with the Bernina Q20, she's learned to love it. Awesome. That's great. Vicki, she uses all three, um, especially when I've lost my groove, I switch modes and try again. That's a, that is a great, great thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So Sue says, if question, if using precision, you don't end up with any little thread nests, question mark. So precision mode, Sue, um, like, cause everything is precision mode is stitch regulated or cruise control. So if you can pop that in, um, I'll come back to that. Um, cause that's a good question, but I'm thinking precision is stitch regulated, but I'm not positive. So I don't want to make an ass out of myself. Um, okay. Jeannie, she uses manual, but found that different speeds work for different motifs. Yeah. I love Jeannie that you're in manual. I absolutely love that. That's awesome. Um, so Tammy says that some APQS machines have a glide feature that will allow the needle to still slowly stitch in regulated mode since I don't have, yeah, so Tammy, that's actually what I consider the cruise mode. Um, so mine is like BSR one, I think on the Bernina. I'm not sure, but I, th I know a one considers it a uh, cruise mode, but the glide feature on the APQS, that's what I live in, in that, that cruise mode. So, okay. Okay. So precision mode. No, I don't get thread nest. So Sue's question was if using precision, which is where the needle still moves, um, I don't, I guess you're asking, I don't end up with any thread nests. I don't end up with thread nests because I'm not allowing my needle to actually sit there and stitch numerous times um, in the same spot. So when I'm doing my ruler work, because this is typically when, when I really like it, I like when I hit go, that needle is starts to move, right? Because then I, as soon as I start to move the machine, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to show you what, what I'm doing here. When you start the machine, there's no hesitation and I won't get any large stitches in that because of that. So it's like the stitch regulator doesn't have to like go, oh wait, she's moving now. Let's, let's get a move on. Let's get that needle moving. So that's typically what I do. But when I stop, I'm actually stopping the machine for the most part. It's very rare that I don't stop the machine when I reposition my ruler. So I, so I don't get thread nests, but if I sat there and I let my machine continually take stitches, I would get thread nests, I get thread break, things like that. So awesome. Um, yeah, BSR1, thank you. I always, I, I always feel like I, they should be the opposite. Like BSR1 should be the stitch regulator and BSR2 should be that cruise mode. But Jeannie, of course, you are correct. Um, anyway, that is kind of all I have for you guys today. If you don't have any other questions, this was relatively short. So I just want to remind you that we're all threading our needle one at a time, right? We're all starting in the same spot. We, you know, I've been doing this for almost 20 years really, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say this over and over again. Don't compare your journey to anybody else's journey. You are different. Okay. So I'm going to sign off. I hope I really like, do me a favor, go into the comments or go on to the Quilters Groove page. Let me know like, Hey, you know, I tried this and post pictures and, um, let me know what, um, if you try a new mode, because I would love to hear that. So if you aren't subscribed to my newsletter, you can find it on the Quilters Groove page right on the very top header. It will say, um, get the, what is it? Let me scroll down and tell you exactly what it says. So I don't send you someplace right at the top. It says wondering what rulers to start with. 
You can grab a free video and a checklist that actually will also put you on my email list. So pop on over and say hello. All right, have a fantastic day. I'll see you next week.